So, sir, uh, we are uh, live now. Uh, before we start, uh, uh, I would request uh, Dr. Ah. SN Datta for head uh, uh, training in IMD to say a few words and then ah. we will move to this uh, webinar. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, First of all, though, it is World Environment Day 2023. So another one thing is also there because since last two years, uh, India, uh, 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 well, another one thing, first of all, I should tell that uh, Meteorological Training Institute is uh, one of the main center for the building and developing capacity in the field of weather, climate, and allied sciences. So now for the capacity building of the departmental person and the personnel engaged in the different national meteorological and hydrological services and other department, already routine, long-term, different duration training courses are there. But since last two years, uh, due to the, uh, due to the driving force our, from our present DGM. Uh, now, India Meteorological Department is also engaged in the building and developing capacity of the community in the different stakeholders in, in these fields. And to, now, towards this direction, we try to organize every week one webinar lecture and it is broadcasted through YouTube on different scientific scientific topics in a very popular way. So now today is a very um, auspicious day, very important day. Today is World Environment Day. So on this auspicious day, we didn't want to sk uh, skip, uh, lose the chance, lose the chance so as a result of which we requested uh, Dr. V.K. Soni, he is a well-known expert in this field. He is the in charge of Environmental Monitoring and Research Center of India Meteorological Department. And he is an expert, not only an expert scientist, but at the same time, he is an expert resource person, expert teacher in different training courses. It is national or, for, national or international participants since for a long time. And uh, with this small introduction, now I request Dr. V.K. Soni to please start his lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for these kind words. And uh, today is the World Environment Day, uh, 5th June. is always uh, right from 1973, it is being celebrated as the World Environment Day and the theme of uh, today's World Environment Day is the solutions to plastic pollution and it is uh, celebrated under the global campaign Beat Plastic Pollution. And in India, uh, this is being uh, celebrated around the Mission Life uh, program of uh, Government of India. This uh, mission life, uh, that is the lifestyle for environment, was announced or introduced uh, by Honorable Prime Minister of India during the COP26 uh, in 2021 at uh, Glasgow. Basically, this uh, lifestyle for environment means to bring the uh, behavioral change in India individual and as a community to protect the environment and preserve the environment. So, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, today uh, I'll be speaking on uh, what uh, connection is there between climate change and plastic pollution. 
So uh, the lecture, the outline of this lecture is climate change scenario, uh, particularly our Indian region, and then projected climate change. Then we'll move to the uh, today's specific topic uh, on plastic. So what is plastic and how it is uh, entering in the food chain and then what is the climate change connection and uh, finally what we can do as a individual and then uh, question and answers on this particular uh, topic. So uh, India Meteorological Department is collecting meteorological observations right from 19, 1875. Soon, very soon we are going to complete 150 years. And this is the time series from 1901 to 2022 that shows that uh, the mean temperature over Indian region uh, is increasing uh, by a rate of 0.64 degree centigrade per century. And the maximum temperature is showing much more uh, significant trend at uh, 1 degree centigrade per century and minimum at 0.28 degree centigrade per 100 years. And very recently, the fifth uh, 2022 is considered as the fifth warmest year on the record since 1901. And other warmest years are the 2016, 9, 2009, 2017, and 2010. So we are, Miss India is warming up uh, uh, at rate 0.64 degree centigrade. And the global uh, average, if we see, then average global temperature in 2022 was about 1.15 degree centigrade above the pre industrial. At uh, level. So, uh, global average is uh, much more higher as compared to the Indian average. And 2022 was again uh, not the warmest year on record, but only the fifth or sixth warmest year. I am saying fifth or sixth uh, warmest because. Uh, uh, these are the six uh, estimates by different institutions. Three institutions are saying that it is fifth warmest and three institutions are saying it is the sixth warmest. But it is one of the uh, warmest year on the uh, record. And this is the special distribution. So almost all over the Indian region, the temperature is uh, warming up. There are few pockets in which uh, there is either no uh, trend or uh, even cooling trend is also seen. And the consequences of this uh, uh, climate change or warming environment that we are seeing the extremes are uh, rising. The heat wave trend uh, from 1961 to 2021 are showing that most of most of Indian regions are experiencing uh, increasing trend over Indian region. And cold wave trends are uh, declining over Indian region. The uh, All India annual rainfall is not showing, if we consider uh, from 1901, then uh, there is hardly any trend, but there are uh, epochs when this uh, uh, rainfall is showing increasing or uh, declining trend. And recent uh, uh, years are showing uh, like from you can see that from 2000 onwards uh, there is large years when large number of years when the we received less amount of rainfall. And the another significant consequence of this climate change or warming world is that the uh, heavy rainfall events are increasing significantly over Indian region. You can see here that this uh, uh, arrow, red arrow that is 
uh, filled arrows are showing uh, the increasing trend in heavy rainfall events over Indian region. So, uh, so uh, there is no uh, much trend in the uh, rainfall, but uh, uh, heavy rainfall events are increasing over Indian region. And then trends in uh, rainy storm events and rain days over India are also showing increasing uh, trend. And consequently, the trends in frequency of floods and aerial extent of uh, drought. So, flood events are frequency of flood events are increasing over Indian region. And uh, tropical cyclones are not showing uh, much trend here, but we found that there is an increase in uh, global proportion of uh, tropical cyclones reaching category 4 or uh, 5 intensity in the recent decade by 25 to 30 percent per 1 degree centigrade rise in, in global warming. And North Indian Ocean uh, is showing increase in frequency of extremely severe cyclones and above uh, over Arabian Sea in uh, recent years. And there is low confidence in detecting detectable anthropogenic influence on increasing cyclone activity over Indian Ocean uh, region. So, these are the uh, trends. So, uh, these cyclonic storms and above are showing a little declining trend in North Indian Ocean uh, for the period 1965 to 2019. So, uh, but the intensity is seen uh, to be uh, rising. So, frequency of landfalling tropical cyclones category 3, 4, 5 <laughs> has increased slightly globally, and frequency of uh, landfalling tropical cyclone category 1 and 2 has decreased uh, globally. And over uh, North Indian Ocean, uh, frequency of landfalling uh, tropical cyclone has decreased significantly. And extreme severe tropical cyclones show uh, no change. And recently, in uh, 2020, uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences has published this assessment of climate change over the Indian region, and this uh, is showing the uh, uh, the a projected estimate of warming in midterm uh, up to 2069 is. Uh, 1.39 plus minus 0.18 degree centigrade uh, under the RPCC RCP 2.6 scenario and 2.03 plus minus 0.28 degree centigrade under RCP 4.5 uh, scenario. We have more confidence in RCP 8.5 uh, scenario uh, and that shows that uh, the in midterm the temperature will rise by 2.70 degree centigrade per uh, under R RCP 8.5 scenario. And uh, because of this, consequent, uh, consequently because of this warming, hysteric sea level uh, along the Indian coast is likely to rise by 20 to 30 centimeter at the end of 21st century. Hysteric means the uh, related to a density. So, because of change in uh, this sea surface temperature, the uh, sea level will also change. So, by the end of 21st century, an increase in mean and uh, variability of monsoon precipitation together with substantial increase in precip daily precipitation extremes is projected. Means the more extreme events will uh, we will experience over Indian region. So, now I will come to uh, the today's topic that is the plastic pollution and plastics are basically the uh, polymers which are chains of molecules that are derived from small molecules of monomers. Monomers are uh, means the small molecules and polymers are these small molecules can combine together and make a complex uh, 
combination of molecules that is called the polymer. So, uh, so most of the plastic is produced means these monomers uh, are produced by uh, from the petroleum products. Uh, so, the feed stock is the fossil fuel. So, ethylene and propylene are uh, produced in this uh, as a byproduct of petroleum and these are these are the monomers and converted into plastic uh, like uh, poly, polythene, polythene which is popularly uh, you must be uh, knowing. So, polythene is produced in these factories and uh, goes to the market where these are used by the consumers. So, here the consumer behavior is very important here and plays a critical role. Uh, so, it determines the amount of plastic produced in the uh, over the uh, globe. So, uh, the it is very important to bring the behavioral change in the uh, consumer here. So, that not only determines the uh, amount of plastic produced, but also determines the uh, garbage or waste produced by the, the uh, produced in the uh, environment. And finally, uh, it reaches in the dumping yard and burning. So, more uh, details we will uh, see in the coming slides. So, uh, if you carefully look at the plastic products, then uh, at the bottom of the bottle or any other product, you will see these seven uh, symbols. So, these seven symbols uh, represent the different kind of plastics. So, 1 to 7 like uh, polyethylene, uh, terephthalene, PET is the 1, then second is SDPE, high density polythene and third is the polyvinyl chloride. Like this, there are seven categories depending on what chemicals are added to uh, make these kind of uh, plastics. And another category of plastic is the uh, uh, depending on the properties of this plastic are classified into thermoplastic and thermosets. Thermoplastics are uh, can be melted and reformed multiple times. So, these are the recyclable and these uh, seven categories are comes fall in into these uh, thermoplastics. But good thing is that these are recyclable. We do uh, recycling or not that is a different thing. Another kind of plastic is the thermosets. So, these thermosets uh, uh, once you heat the uh, plastic it softens, but after cooling it becomes permanently uh, hard and such type of material are uh, non recyclable so only once you can use such type of uh, material but very long lasting you might have seen the plastic uh, switches in the in your household so these are made of these thermosets but these are not recyclable these are just like cookies once you make the cookies you cannot uh, uh, you cannot uh, heat it again and then uh, transform it into other kind of material. If you heat it, the cookie will burn and similarly the thermosets will also burn and become useless. And another category is the bioplastics. So, bioplastics are made from the renewable material just like uh, vegetable oils, starches and these are the biodegradable. Uh, but again the uh, degradability is a question mark here because it certain uh, in, a, in a particular environment only these uh, are degraded. If you throw them in dustbin uh, they reach in the dump yard where they, uh, the conditions may not be conducible for uh, degradation. So, these are some of the uh, products that we uh, use in our daily life. But you see this uh, uh, this sentence that is written in uh, bold uh, red letters. 
it is estimate that half of all plastic produced is designed to be used only once and then thrown away but uh, recently in uh, july 2022 uh, government of india has banned the single use plastic many type of single use plastic and these are the plastic production by region so uh, asia produces about 17% of total uh, products total uh, plastic china around 31% europe around 61% and this nafta region that includes 12 countries including uh, mexico canada and united states sorry uh, mexico canada and united these three countries together make this uh, north american free trade ag agreement countries so they produce about 19% so uh, almost around uh, 460 million tons of uh, plastic is produced globally and uh, plastic waste is generated about 353 uh, million ton Uh, around the globe but only 19% of this plastic waste waste is recycled so that is a, a big concern here uh, well 19% uh, uh, is incinerated and about 50% went into uh, landfills so uh, so uh, this this statistics is a big concern for all of us that only 9% can be is is being uh, recycled all over the globe so 20% is disposed of in uncontrolled manner and then uh, we say that it is leaked into the environment and this plastic waste is again classified into uh, these uh, five categories the uh, plastic uh, that is less than 1 micrometer is considered as the nano plastic 1 micrometer to 5 mm is considered as microplastic 5 mm to 2.5 cm is meso and 2.5 to 1 meter is macro and more than that is considered as the mega plastic so here this micro and nano plastic is a big concern for the uh, environment so next slide uh, you see uh, uh, this this studies on microplastic is being uh, now uh, picking up over indian region so in 2020 uh, around 35 publications we saw and a percentage of studies conducted in different uh, uh, systems like marine marine system is being studied most over indian region and then fresh water and then comes uh, human consumables and then fresh water and a uh, few studies are there where they studied the atmospheric component of microplastic also so nanoplastic is seen in ambient air also uh, there are many studies uh, globally available that shows that nano nanoparticles of plastics are available in the atmosphere also and most studied area is the southern region because the marine system is being mostly studied and we have this uh, sea area mostly in the southern region so there the most studies belong to southern india so this uh, slide will uh, particularly disturb you and if it is doesn't disturb you then uh, again there is a problem here. so uh, a large amount of a dead uh, a plastic was found in a dead well around uh, 40 kg of plastic so you see that how this oceans have been contaminated with the plastics and the animals uh, a large number of animals die because of the they can they are consuming the plastics from the garbage dumps and this uh, uh, particular picture of polar bear caught attention 
and this uh, uh, became viral uh, these polar bears in arctic so uh, actually this uh, late freezing of sea generally they migrate over the uh, over the uh, land region uh, where this human population is there and they are uh, consuming this plastic and uh, becoming sick and uh, dying also and this picture of turtle you can see and that is integral in the uh, fish net and how these plastics are entering into the uh, food chain so this is the fish you, you see here and uh, i'll come uh, in in the coming slides uh, for the particularly the indian scenario so almost uh, see the large number of plastic particles are found inside this fish so uh, so it is it has been estimated that that by 2050 2050 most of the uh, sea animals will uh, get affected by this plastic pollution and see uh, this seabird uh, a large number of uh, plastic particles are found inside this seabird so these are very uh, disturbing picture but uh, i had to include in this uh, presentation to sensitize sensitize the uh, people and you see how these uh, these birds are uh, getting affected by the plastic dumps and uh, these plastic uh, particles are reaching into the food chain of human beings also so through fish they are entering in uh, the uh, foods of uh, that we uh, consume not only this but the soil also getting affected by the this tiny particles of plastic so this is one example of the uh, artificial football turf and turf is made of this rubber and plastic uh, thing and these plastic particles uh, washed washed away by rain and found in a stream so this uh, through this stream this uh, enter in the fresh water also to the ocean and fresh water also and from that uh, these are entering into the food chain of human being and uh, you see here that most more than uh, 700000 microscopic plastic fibers could be released into the environment during each cycle of washing machine so what you wear uh, that is also important and how frequently you are uh, washing the clothes that also uh, important and the chlorinated plastic can release harmful uh, chemicals into the surrounding soil which can then seep into groundwater and from there uh, it enters into the ecosystem so uh, so this microplastic and nanoplastics are uh, impacting almost uh, uh, the complete uh, human health system right from top to uh, bottom when the brain is getting affected because of exposure to the nanoparticles so uh, gastric diseases then influence on lungs interference on immune system neurotoxicity means it is affecting the brain also and interaction with the uh, blood component so it is significantly affecting the human health and these are some studies uh, uh, over indian region from the ministry of earth science has this national center for coastal research and the data on observations on 254 indian beaches between collected between 2013 to 2015 on marine waste reveals that Odisha coast has the lowest 0.31 gram per square meter of uh, plastic waste and the Goa is the most polluted as far as the plastic is concerned. So Goa 
uh, we said found that uh, 205 uh, gram per square meter is the uh, plastic litter. Again, the uh, Andaman and Lakshadweep Islands also recorded very high values as compared to the uh, mainland beaches. So these, uh, uh, these are basically not the local people are uh, contaminating, but the tourist people are contaminating this, these islands. And debris collected from these beaches are mostly domestic and anthropogenic discards, plastic litter such as carry bags, sachet of uh, soft drink, edible oil, detergent, beverages, cases of cosmetic, toothpaste, pet bottle, ice cream container. These are the most predominant plastic uh, elements found over the beaches. And this is also again a very disturbing uh, statistics that microplastics were found almost in 80 percent of fish uh, collected over the uh, beaches. So count means three to six particles in each fish were was found and most dominant was the uh, filaments of size 0.1 to 2 mm and uh, these were of polystyrene or polyethylene uh, mainly. And surprisingly, such uh, plastics are reaching up to the Arctic and Antarctic also by, by through the ocean current, uh, these plastics can travel uh, up to the Arctic region. And here you see this uh, filled squares of plastic what is the, where the filled squares in yellow color are the plastics uh, found in the uh, region. So all over the Arctic region, we could uh, find the plastic. And the blank one is the where there was no uh, plastic. So uh, these uh, different things are there, like sea ice, beach, and triangle is the surface, pelagic is the, this, and sea floor, hexagon, like this here. And Wherever this yellow filled uh, symbol is there, means plastic was found over there. And these plastics, uh, in terms of how much pressure they are uh, putting on sea surface, uh, is represented like so through uh, rivers, through traffic, through uh, this ship traffic, uh, all these plastic enter into the at Arctic atmosphere and overseas surface. So this is the uh, review paper that is published in uh, Nature uh, by Bergman. Gives the, uh, they, they studied almost 700 research papers and then this uh, uh, figure they arrived. And again, uh, because the plastic is found, so uh, this plastic is entering into, or uh, plastic is ingested by all these animals uh, found in the Arctic region. And this is the distribution of decays by type and sources. So you see in 2019, about 22 million tons of plastic leak to the uh, environment. And Mis mismanaged waste is basically about 82 percent and here you can see the litter is 5 percent, marine activity is 1 percent, transport related microplastics 4 percent, microplastic dust is 3 percent and other things. So estimated global leakage is to the environment is very significant that is about 22 million tons. 2019 and it is projected that it will double in uh, by 2060 and so GHG emissions from plastic uh, life cycle and here the uh, relation with the climate change comes they are significant emitters of greenhouse gases so throughout their life cycle, plastic uh, plastics have significant carbon footprint 
and emit 3.4 percent of global greenhouse gases. How? Uh, in coming uh, slide, I will explain it. So, in 2019, plastic generated about 1.8 billion tons of greenhouse gases emissions, that is 3.4 percent of global emissions with uh, 90 percent of these emissions coming from their production and conversion from uh, fossil fuel. Because fossil fuel is the main uh, source of uh, plastic production. And by 2060, emissions from plastic life cycle are set to more than double and reaching about 4.3 billion tons of GHG emissions. So, uh, the plastic industry uh, consumes about 6 percent of global oil consumption and it is expected to reach 20 percent by 2050. So, here the Petroleum uh, used for uh, making plastic is significant, that is about 6 percent. And see that only 9 percent is being recycled. So, uh, this is again becomes uh, significant. And when, uh, when plastic is left in the atmosphere environment and it reacts with the solar radiation, and with that reaction, a large amount of greenhouse gases are also again produced. So, uh, the waste that is left in the environment again produces the greenhouse gases. And recycling and closing the loop means the uh, closing the loop means uh, this avoid, intercept, and re redesign. This is the uh, closed loop uh, as far as the plastic is concerned. So, uh, so recycling also uh, consumes a lot of energy and produces the uh, greenhouse gases. So, if you can uh, recycle then impact of, uh, but uh, the recycled, recycling of plastic can impact the uh, plastic pollution on the environment and in fact in, in turn it is uh, it can help restrict the climate change. So, in marine also the same thing that the marine plastic breaks down into mi microplastic and microplastic further into the nanoplastic uh, when it reacts with the uh, radiation. And uh, it produces the greenhouse gas uh, indirectly and affect the uh, marine uh, system negatively. Basically, the marine uh, phytoplankton uh, are the very good sequesters of uh, greenhouse gases, particularly the carbon dioxide. They absorb the uh, carbon dioxide. But when these phytoplanktons are uh, ingested with the microplastics, then their absorbing capacity of plastic gets reduced. So, uh, they, uh, this marine litter negatively impacts the greenhouse uh, gases emission. And then open burning is again a serious concern. So, uh, directly in in uh, winters, we find, found that it is a uh, it is used for uh, heating purpose, and people unknowingly or knowingly are responsible to for uh, impacting the uh, human health. And not only human health, but uh, the chlorine that is released from burning the plastic waste is a significant uh, a cause of the uh, smog in the city, particularly the dense smog is formed when chlorine is found in the atmosphere. So, uh, the global warming potential of black carbon that is emitted uh, from the burning of this plastic garbage is uh, almost 5000 times greater than that of carbon dioxide. Of course, the 
lifetime of black carbon is much smaller as compared to the uh, carbon dioxide. So, Indian scenario uh, as far as plastics is concerned that uh, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas uh, says that uh, the consumption of plastic in India is about 20 kg in, in 2022. 20 kg is much less as compared to the consumption in West countries like USA, where it is almost 10 times more. And CPCB reports that the plastic contributes to 8 percent of the total solid waste and Delhi is producing the maximum uh, amount of plastic waste followed by the Calcutta and Ahmedabad. 60 percent of total plastic waste is being recycled and uh, household generate maximum plastic waste of which water and soft drink bottles are the largest contributor. And 43 percent of manufactured plastics are used for packaging purpose and most are of single use. And multi-layered plastics are categorized under either recyclable, energy recoverable or uh, with some other alternate use. And the beaches near Mumbai, Kerala and Andaman Nicobar are among the worst polluted in the and not only in India, but in the world. And plastic debris affects at least 267 species worldwide, including 86 percent of all sea turtle species, 40 percent of all sea bird species and 43 percent of all marine mammal species. So, these already I explained that by July uh, 2022, uh, some not all the single pla single use plastic, but a large number of single use plastics have been banned by the government of India. That includes the ear blood with plastic, ear blood with plastic sticks, plastic uh, sticks for balloon, plastic flag, candy sticks, uh, ice cream sticks, polystyrene plates, cup. These are the uh, in the banned list. And it has been estimated that uh, the collection efficiency as 80.2 percent in uh, means single use plastic out of which 28.4 percent was treated only. So, uh, some of the uh, things that uh, every individual can uh, do and every community should start doing. One is the uh, shop sustainably. When you are going to the market, use uh, bag, carry a, a bag with you. Uh, so that will reduce the use of uh, polythene. And the recycle, reuse, recycle will not work now. So instead of three hours we are using earlier. Now we are using the five hours. So first is the refuse, reduce and then uh, comes the three other cycles like reuse, recycle and rot. Rot means your composting, but composting will not work in case of plastic unless and otherwise it is a biodegradable plastic. And then travel sustainably, uh, carry with uh, more environmental uh, friendly products with you, carry your own uh, bug, carry your own bottle. So, in fact, in, in some restaurants and some uh, many countries now give some discounts if you bring your own cup for uh, coffee or tea. I have seen this in meeting in UN uh, that uh, they they were giving the almost one dollar uh, discount for a cup of coffee if you bring your own uh, cup and then become the whenever you 
uh, find that somebody is making plastic pollution then uh, raise your voice against doing this these things see. and sensitize sensitize your local authorities to bring this change dress sustainably so as i said earlier that the clothing is also a very important uh, source of pollution if you can uh, repair your clothes and uh, wear that uh, those clothes then do that uh, rather than every time buying a new cloth then use plastic free uh, personal care products as far as uh, you can do and as a community you can always take part in cleaning the beach uh, cleaning a river lake pond a nearby you so these were some of the uh, some of the things which uh, were proposed under mission life uh, to bring the changes uh, behavioral changes in the human being to make the society a better world so thank you very much for listening uh, patiently and if there is an, uh, any question then please uh, ask me or if there is any question in chat box then we can take those yeah. two question in the uh, yeah you can come here uh, so first question is how plastic in ocean can lead to warming in ocean yeah so uh, a plastic doesn't directly cause the warming but uh, the ghgs emitted from the warming ghgs emitted from the plastics dumped in the uh, uh, marine environment uh, causes the warming of the atmosphere so uh, the plastic uh, dumped in the ocean is a uh, is a great source of methane emission so which which is basically a significant greenhouse gases gas and uh, causes the warming in the atmosphere so uh, second question is how washing machine use can inject plastic in environment yeah so uh, uh, if you are wearing a cloth that is made of cotton or uh, some material that is biodegradable then it's okay but uh, a large num a large uh, 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 number of clothes are made of nylon polyester these are nothing but the plastic products so uh whenever you wash these clothes in the washing machine then small small fibers uh, are uh, emitted from those clothes and ultimately these uh, fibers reach into the soil or uh, dump yards like that you can see you can check your washing machine after uh, completing a washing cycle you will find that lot of small fibers are there in the uh, washing machine so that is nothing but the uh, most of uh, that part is uh, basically the plastic nylon polyester like that uh, so if there is no question then i wish to express sincere thanks to dr sony for his very informative informative and important lectures as such from sony's lecture i have also got lot got lot of lessons i was not knowing so really it is a very uh, enriching lecture and i i am sure that this your youtube lecture not uh, not today every day it will make the community learn in this field in this aspect so thank you very much so is there any uh, if there are any questions from the participants or another thing uh, i think there is no question because uh, in the chat box also there was no questions so yeah. thank you very much
thank you sir thank you uh, uh, so i thank uh, uh, director general of meteorology and through uh, although he is not here but he was guiding us from uh, wmo and uh, uh, dr pai and uh, to uh, dr uh, datta head a uh, training mti pune uh, so but thank you very much for uh, chairing this session and for your kind words thank you thank you so we are closing the meeting now eh? thank you yes. thank you